J-E-L-L-O. The Jell-O program brought to you by Jell-O and Jell-O Pudding, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, Rochester, and yours truly, Don Wilson. The orchestra opens the program with One on the House. J-E-L-L-O, Jell-O. This is the name, friends, that for years has identified America's favorite gelatin dessert. Jell-O is a trademark, the property of General Foods and your assurance of delightful quality and flavor. Today, as always, Jell-O comes to you in that same familiar red-lettered package. But the Jell-O inside that package is new and different. Jell-O that hits a new high in flavor. Jell-O that is more delicious than ever before. By means of a new Jell-O process, Jell-O's tempting, tingling flavor is locked in. Yes, locked right into the tiny Jell-O particles. And that means extra goodness. More pleasure for you in every gay, shimmering Jell-O dessert you enjoy. Let your next package of Jell-O prove it. Open the package. Notice that there's no telltale aroma. No sign of escaping fragrance and flavor. Then dissolve the Jell-O and notice how Jell-O's captive goodness comes pouring out in a rush of richness. Get several boxes of Jell-O tomorrow. The package is just the same, but the Jell-O inside is better than ever. Thanks to Jell-O's new locked-in flavor. the house played by the orchestra. Now, ladies and gentlemen, spring is here once again, and warm weather has returned to Southern California. That old sun sure feels good. So without further ado, we bring you a man who every year at this time removes the sleeves and rolls up the legs of his long underwear, Jack Benny. Thank you. Jello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and Don, you're right. When I take off my longies, I feel like a fat lady getting out of a phone booth. <laughs> you know, Don, spring does something to me. I, I'm so peppy lately. What do you mean, peppy? Well, every morning I jump out of bed at 5 a.m., put on my gym suit, exercise with my 100-pound dumbbells, and then now, I... Now, wait a minute, Jack. You mean to say that you actually pick up 100-pound dumbbells? Well, I, uh, I don't exactly pick them up. I just tug at them. <laughs> It, it develops the shoulders, huh? Well, anyway, after that, I put on the gloves and spar around for about 45 minutes with Rochester. You know, this morning, he got in a quick punch that darn near knocked me cold. Packed quite a wallop, huh? Well, it's not that so much, Don, but I found out later he was saving tinfoil for the China relief in his left glove. <laughs> Imagine, we were only doing morning exercise, and Rochester had to put a heavy tinfoil in his glove. Well, Jack, uh, didn't you have anything in your glove? Well, I did insert a small flat iron. <laughs> But the, uh, the cord got caught around my neck, Rochester swung, and the birdies reminded me that spring was here. You know? <laughs> oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. Hello, Don. How are you, Mary? How do you feel? Oh, wonderful. I love spring. Me too. You know, Jack, I saw my first robin this morning, and he came all the way from Alabama. Now, wait a minute. How do you know the robin came from Alabama? He had a banjo on his knee. <laughs> Oh, Susanna. <laughs> now, this may be a coincidence, Mary, but I saw a robin today that came in from St. Joe, Missouri. How do you know? He kissed me. They love me there. <laughs> <laughs> How's that for a nifty? Huh? Oh, you're a riot. Where are you getting all the pep lately? Where do you think I'm getting it? It's spring. You know, Mary, in the spring, a young man's fancy lightly turns to thoughts of love. Well, I'll be darned. He's got a glint in his eye. <laughs> in my blue eye, if you please. Say, Mary, uh, Jack tells me that he's been doing all kinds of exercises. Not only that, he even bought a bicycle. You should have seen him yesterday when he was showing off on us. <laughs> now, 
<laughs> Cut that out. What did he do, Mary? <laughs> well, I saw Jack riding down Wilshire Boulevard yesterday, and he yelled out, Hey, Mary, look, no hands. And what happened? He hit a lamppost, smack, no teeth. <laughs> I just did that for a gag. Anyway, I can take those falls, can't I? You're good for about one more, Daddy. Save it. <laughs> Don't worry about me. I know what I'm doing all the time. Hiya, Jackson. Boy, do I feel good. Ain't spring the nut? Well, look who's a nature lover all of a sudden. I ain't kidding. I went out in the garden this morning, and you know what, Jackson? What? I seen a robin that just flew in from Chattanooga. All right, Phil. How do you know the robin came from Chattanooga? He was choo-chooing on a worm. <laughs> it's a lulu. A lulu? That hair is ever sharp, like them pencils. <laughs> Oh, you're a cliff. <laughs> Say, Phil, what do you mean you were out in your garden? Have you got a garden? Sure, I got one of them victory gardens. I'm going to raise tomatoes and beans and radishes and uh, what's that stuff that grows on them long stalks? Corn, you know what it is. <laughs> anyway, Phil, I, I had no idea you were such a farmer. Jackson, there's nothing like it. You take one of them seeds, you put it in the ground, and the first thing you know, a little green thing shoots up. Do tell. You pull it out, and there's a carrot on the other end. Well. Then you keep on pulling, and there's some potatoes, and then you pull a little more, and there's some beets, and now then Now, wait pull... a minute, Phil. Wait a minute. <laughs> Vegetables don't grow on top of each other like acrobats. <laughs> but congratulations, anyway, on your love for the soil. Well, it's about time for a song, I guess. Where's Dennis? Here I am, Mr. Benny. Boy, spring is sure here, all right. You know, I saw a robin this morning that came all the Dennis, way from... Dennis, Dennis, we don't want, uh, we don't want any more, uh, we don't want any more robin gags. We've had enough. Oh, let him tell it, Jack. Yeah, this one struck me as rather amusing. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's hear it. Well, I saw a robin this morning that came all the way from Natchez to Mobile. <laughs> How do you know? My mama done told me. <laughs> Say, that was all right. Now, let's have your song. Yes, sir. And by the way, kid, as long as you mention spring, you better start mowing my lawn next week. Well, I don't think I should mow your lawn anymore. It's not dignified. Oh, it isn't, eh? Besides, I'm a big singer. Would John Charles Thomas mow your lawn? He would if he worked for Jack. <laughs> you said it. Sing, kid. Let's have your song. Oh, <laughs> 
Bye. That was I'll Pray For You, sung by Dennis Day. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to announce that next Sunday, as a special treat for grown-ups and kiddies alike, we are going to present a real old-time minstrel show. Doc Benny will come to town with his troupe of 40 entertainers. Count them, 40. A minstrel show, eh? Yep. Hey, Jackson, can I be the interlocutator? <laughs> I'm going to be the interlocutor. You can be the tater if you want to. <laughs> Now, fellas, um, <laughs> fellas, this is the real thing, so I, uh, I want you, I want you all to put burnt cork on your faces. Everybody bring tambourines. And Mary, I want you and Dennis to wear bandanas. But why? Never mind. All right, Don. Bandanas. Oh, Jack, you can't do this to me. <laughs> you can't do it. Don Bandana. No, Jackson, no, 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 no. no. Phil. <laughs> Phil, you keep out of this. All right, Don, I'm not going to argue with you. Bandana. Now, wait a minute, Jack. I'm always very happy to say that Jell-O is economical and easy to make. But, Don... And I love to tell the folks it's America's favorite gelatin dessert and it has that new locked-in flavor. Now, Don... But if you think I'm going to stand up here in front of all these people and say that Jell-O is very good with sliced bandanas, you're crazy! <laughs> Well, you said it, Smarty, so there. And if you want to know something, that was one of my cleverest ideas. It was brilliant, wasn't it, Dennis? No, sir. <laughs> Boy, am I going to mow that lawn. <laughs> yes, and I can just hear you snip, snip, snipping on that hedge, too. Well, what do you say, Phil? It's about time for a band number. So soon? Yeah, I want to leave early today. I'm going out to Hillcrest and play nine holes of golf before it gets dark. Golf? You mean to say you still want to play golf after what happened Friday? Mary, I was a little off my game. I generally shoot in the high 70s. Or the low 80s. <laughs> or the gay 90s. <laughs> oh, shush. I play all right. Now, wait a minute, Jackson. You ain't so hot. I gave you a good trim in the other day, and you never even paid off the bet. The reason I didn't pay off, Phil, is because the match was never finished. Never finished? Why, what happened, Phil? Oh, let me tell him. Oh, you're always telling everything. <laughs> you see, Don, last Friday was a beautiful day. So Jack and Phil went out to play a round of golf, and they invited me to come along and be scorekeeper. Scorekeeper, oh. scorekeeper. <laughs> well, anyway, the boys went into the locker room to change their clothes. So I waited and waited, and you know how Jack is. He's worse than a woman when Now hurry up and hurry up and change your clothes, Phil. We want to get out and sock that old ball around. But I haven't played in years, Jackson. Oh, you'll get back in the swing of it. I'll give you a few pointers. Rochester, for heaven's sake. What's the matter, boss? Don't wad up my suit and shove it on the shelf. Put it on a hanger. Well, if I take too good a care of it, it ain't never gonna be mine. <laughs> You won't get that suit for a long time. Now, hand me my golf shoes. Here you are. You know, Mr. Benny, you sure look romantic standing there in your long underwear. <laughs> romantic? Yes, sir. If you had a dagger around your waist, you'd look just like Hamlet. Hamlet. To be or not to be. <laughs> that is the question. There he goes again. Quiet, quiet, no quiet there. there. Put your pants on. <laughs> Oh, nobody around here can stand a guy with talent. Oh, jealous at Hillcrest. Oh, Rochester, where did you put my knickers? Right here, boss. <laughs> knickers? Hey, Jack, can you still wearing them old-time plus fours? When I put on the cap that matches them, they're very snappy. <laughs> Come on, Phil, let's get out there and hit that old pill. Oh, I don't feel like playing, Jackson. I worked late last night. I'm all in. Oh, uh... Tired, eh? Yeah, like I told you, I ain't had a golf club in my hand for over five years. Oh, five years, eh? <laughs> hmm. Well, I'll tell you what, Phil, I'll bet you ten dollars on the game. <laughs> you know, just to make it interesting. Okay, ten bucks. It's a bet. Say, here comes a good golfer, Artie Stebbins. Swell fella, too. Hello, Artie. Hiya, Jack. Who lent you the bloomers, May Robeson? <laughs> The 
These are knickers. What a guy. Always got some corny crack. Well, let's get going. Here's your sweater, boss. Oh, Rochester, I want my old sweater. The one that says, get the chili bowl habit on it. <laughs> Oh, here it is. Hey, come on, Phil. Let's get started. Okay, but I'm telling you, Jackson, I'm a wreck. A wreck, eh? Now, remember, remember our little bet, Phil, $20. No, uh, no reneging now. <laughs> All right, Rochester, pick up my golf bag. You're going to be my caddy. Caddy? Yeah, what do you expect me to do? Leave the clubs here and kick the ball around the course? I wouldn't know, boss. The game I play only involves three moves. Get down on your knees, shake gently, and wish them a happy landing. <laughs> Well, there's no comparison. Shooting craps is no exercise. It ain't, eh? No. Boss, did you ever try to make a four with a pair of loaded dice when the eyes of Texas were upon you? <laughs> no, and I'm not interested. Oh, Mr. Benny, Miss Livingston's waiting for you on the first tee. You better hurry and put your pants on. I've got my pants on. These are knickers. Oh, a victory suit, huh? <laughs> Dennis, tell Mary we'll see her in a minute. Okay. Hello, Jack. How are they going? Oh, hello, Charlie. That's Charlie Lacey, the golf pro here, Phil. Boy, what that guy has done for my game. Hey, Charlie, we're just going out for a round. You want to join us? I'd love to, Jack, but I've got a lesson to give now. Well, you really made a golfer out of me. Only four lessons you think I've been playing all my life. Huh? Well, I'm glad you're satisfied. And by the way, thanks for the check. Don't mention it. It's the best investment I ever made. So long, Charlie. So long. Good luck. Thanks. Come on, Rochester. Let's go, Phil. Okay, boy. I can hardly walk. Hardly walk, eh? Remember our bet, Phil, $30. <laughs> and may the best man win. Hey, Phil. Boy, am I rare to go. Hi, Mary. Sorry we kept you waiting. Well, holy smoke. Get a load of those old-fashioned knickers. These knickers are all right. And that cap hanging over one ear. You look like Jackie Coogan in The Kid. <laughs> all right, all right. Come on, let's play. You shoot first, uh, Phil. Okay. Here's your driver, Mr. Harris. Thanks. Stand back, everybody. Hmm. If you don't mind a suggestion, Phil... You're standing too far away from the ball. Hello, Jackson. Let's get it over with, will you? Four. <laughs> wow, look at that ball go. Look at it go. Look, look. <laughs> 250 yards at the most. Can't understand it after the awful life he's led. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's my turn now. Rochester, tee up my ball a little higher. Higher? It looks like a lollipop now. <laughs> I guess it's all right. Well, here goes. Quiet, everybody. Four! Hmm. <laughs> hmm, I, I fanned it. That's one stroke. Don't count out loud. Must have been standing too far away. There, that's better. 
four. Hmm. Darn it, another fan. I guess I'm holding the club too tight. Well, I'll get it this time. Four. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, Gee, I, I, I fanned it again. You ought to be cool now, boy. Hit it. <laughs> I hit her with all these interruptions. Everybody yelling and screaming at me. Now, here goes. Four, four. What are you fouring about? There's some people standing down there on the green. Well, you won't be there to Labor Day. Oh, yeah? Hmm. Well, watch this. Four. What was that? You broke a window in the clubhouse behind you. <laughs> Gee, I, I can't get rid of that slice. Oh, well, I'll take a five on this hole. Come on, everybody, let's go. Remember our bet, Phil, five dollars. <laughs> Darn those birds, I wish they'd stop singing. They're throwing me off my game. Maybe they don't know you're playing for money. You can pipe down, too. It's a fine country club, anyway, with birds all around. And trees and grass. Oh, it's awful. Oh, keep still. Hey, what hole are we on? You just seven, finished the seventh. Wake up. What's the score, Mary? It's pretty close. Uh, Phil is 28 and you're 128. <laughs> Well, there are two more holes. I've still got a chance. I don't like this club. Hand me my spoon, Rochester. You broke it over my head on the last hole. Oh, yes, then give me my brassy. This is the worst game I ever played. Thank heaven it's not for money. Hey, wait a minute. I'll no, go back to sleep. All right, stand back, Mary. Four. God darn it, what's the matter with me? What did I do that was wrong, Mary? Should have never left Waukegan. <laughs> I mean, I mean, what's wrong with my game? Rochester, you've seen me play better than this. I have? <laughs> yes. What, what am I doing that's wrong here? I think you're holding the club a little you bit. You keep out of this, kid. <laughs> when I want your advice, I'll ask for it. Hey, Jack, here comes Mr. Lacey, your golf teacher. Oh, yeah. Well, hello, Jack. How are you going? I want my money back. That's how it's going. <laughs> Fine teacher. Oh, come on, Jack. Hit the ball. It'll be dark pretty soon. Okay, okay. Four. <laughs> Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Where'd the ball go? Here it is by your left foot. <laughs> oh, yes. Congratulations. It was by your right foot when you started. <laughs> You don't have to get cute about it. Uh, pardon me, boys. Do you mind if I go through? Why, no. No, lady. Go right ahead. Gee, she's pretty old to be playing golf, isn't she? She sure is. How old are you, lady? Eighty-three, and I'm wild about Victor Mature. <laughs> well, go ahead. Let's see you hit the ball. Take it easy now. Huh? <laughs> Well, I'll be darned. Yippee, I'm on the green. And thanks, boys. You're welcome. Gee, 83 years old, and look at her hit that ball. 83 nothing. That dame isn't a day over 70. <laughs> I'm too upset. Let's finish the game tomorrow, Phil. We're finishing it right now. Go ahead and shoot. Okay. Four, lady. <laughs> wow, look at that ball go. Yeah, right in the woods. What a slice. Oh, well, come on, Rochester, let's look for it. Oh, Jack, you'll never find it. Don't worry, I'll join you on the fairway. See you in a minute. <laughs> Is 
gosh, it... Gosh, it's dark. That ball must be around here someplace. I wish I had a flashlight. Rochester. Rochester, where are you? Right in front of you, boy. <laughs> oh. oh, yes, I thought you were a tree. I, I know that ball landed right around here. Why don't we go home, get a good night's sleep, and continue the hunt in the morning? We're going to find that ball tonight. I care how late it is. Whoop! Well, there it is. There's the ball. No. No, it's a moonbeam. <laughs> Rochester, I think if we bear over here to the left, we can kind of... I just happen to remember, boss. This is my night off. I got a date. You can keep your date some other time. We're going to find that ball if it takes all night. Ooh. Let's see. When I sliced, I think the ball went outside of that bush. Or was it the other side? Rochester, on which side of the bush do you think it landed? Huh? Rochester, I said, on which side of the... Rochester! Rochester! Well, I'll be darned, I'm talking to a tree. <laughs> Darn that guy, he sneaked away. Rochester, Rochester, where are you? Rochester, will you come back here and help me find this ball? I don't care how... That's it tomorrow night. Here's the dessert that will win a big smile of approval from the whole family. It's jellied plums, a gay, inviting blend of delicious plums and rich emerald lime jello. For delightful goodness, here's a dessert that's really extra special. A beautiful, shimmering dessert that's sure to become one of your family's favorite treats the very first time they try it. Yes, it's wonderfully good, and nothing could be easier to make. Just dissolve one package of lime jello in a pint of hot plum juice and water and chill until slightly thickened. Next, fold in one cup of canned or stewed fresh plums. Then mold and serve plain or with whipped cream. You'll say you've never seen anything that could beat jellied plums for bright, attractive flavor. Never tasted anything that could top its marvelous flavor. Make up this grand treat. Tomorrow, get a package of lime jello. But be sure it's genuine jello. Because Jell-O's new locked-in flavor is extra rich. This is the last number of the 25th program in the current Jell-O series, and we will be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. So don't forget to tune in for Doc Benny and his world-famous minstrel show. And before signing off, let me remind you that we can all do our part here at home by purchasing United States defense bonds and stamps. For our friends in Canada, the War Savings Certificate. Buy as many as you can and as often as you can. Good night, folks. The Jell-O program is written by Bill Maher and Eddie Boulogne and is sent each week by delayed shortwave to our armed forces throughout the world. Say, have you tried Jell-O puddings? They're really swell. Three luscious puddings that are made by the same folks who make Jell-O. Try Jell-O butterscotch pudding. It's a mellow, creamy dessert full of golden goodness with the flavor of rich, tempting butterscotch. Just the treat to top off any meal in grand style. Tomorrow, when you order Jell-O, ask for Jell-O butterscotch pudding and those two other Jell-O pudding flavors, chocolate and vanilla. Jell-O puddings are just like grandma's, only more so. This program came to you from Hollywood.